Lots more to ask you, but I'm going to ask you to stay with us for a moment as we cross over now to uh, Paul Hershen. He's deputy spokesperson with the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs, joins me now from West Jerusalem. Good to have you with us, sir. We've seen really harrowing pictures coming out of Shujai, a neighborhood. Is Israel using disproportionate force against civilians? Uh, thank you for having me. It's good to be back on this uh, sad day. Uh, this is uh, exactly what we were worried about. This is precisely what we warned about for, for days now. We've been uh, uh, almost begging the civilian population of Shajaiya and a couple of other neighborhoods in the area to move out, to take refuge uh, in other parts of Gaza City and elsewhere in United Nations uh, installations. Uh, Shajaiya is a place where over 140 missiles have been launched into Israel. Over 10 tunnel shafts have been identified in the area. The, the, the behavior of Hamas uh, encouraging uh, and in some cases forcing their own civilians to stay and not to heed warning will, will go down as a, a, a dark point in an already uh, a dark history of Hamas's activities. Now, UNRWA is saying, though, 61,500 people have fled to their schools. They can barely cope with it. A lot of Palestinians say they have nowhere yes. to go. Would you open the siege on Gaza and let these people flee to somewhere safe other than that very narrow strip along the Mediterranean coast where people are stuck? Oh, we have given repetitively for, for a number of days now very specific warnings as to very specific locations where people should, should uh, uh, move out of because of the location of uh, the terror infrastructure that, so you're not, that Hamas is located within. With all due respect, you're not answering my question. Civilian. A lot of people feel they have nowhere no, no, to I, go. Would you open... You're, you're imposing are, a siege on are, Gaza and talk about people not having left the danger zone. Would you mm -hmm. let people out of Gaza? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I, I am answering your question. There are many locations within Gaza to go to. There is, as you well know, no siege on Gaza. There is a naval blockade, one which was ruled legal and legitimate by the United Nations. But as far as the siege on the land is concerned, there have been zero uh, limitations on export from Gaza. And, and with very few exceptions, there are also uh, uh, no limitations on imports to Gaza. So, so, so just to, to put it together, but the truth of the matter is that we have a, a horrific scenes heart-wrenching pictures that we're seeing today, uh, civilians caught up in the, in the fighting. And, and this is exactly what, why, why we didn't want to be in this conflict in the first place. We, for, for weeks prior to being Sorry, dragged sir, into are you, this are you conflict, telling me you are not controlling, clearly, you are not, there is no siege on Gaza? Is, do I understand that to be an official statement from the Israeli foreign ministry, that you are not controlling in it, any way the goods that can come in and out of Gaza and the flow of people from in and out of Gaza? Is that what you're the, telling me? That, that, that is not what I said. What I said is there is zero restriction on exports and there are very limited restrictions on imports, uh, uh, restrictions which are placed on what's called dual-use products which are used for the production of, of weaponry. And you've seen exactly what So Hamas you clearly has still are imposing a siege. The building Let's material. not play with semantics, sir. You clearly do and control the flow of movement yes. and, and goods in and out of Gaza. Well, no, we control the flow of movement of goods and people across our international frontier. Uh, we don't, uh, uh, Gaza, as you well know, also has borders with, uh, with Egypt, uh, and, and we don't restrict. Look, there are, are uh, uh, on a, a regular day, there are people from Gaza crossing into Israel on a regular basis, and there are people, Palestinians from, from Gaza, who are coming for medical treatment into Israel right now as we speak. Let me be clear. The Palestinian people are not our enemy. We are fighting against one of the darkest uh, uh, schools of thought in modern political history, Hamas, which has embedded itself inside civilian locations and, and uh, 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 as a war crime is dissuading and in some cases preventing their own civilians from, from heeding the warnings which have been given, very clear and very specific warnings, and a, a result of which we've seen them caught up in some bitter fighting and, and we're seeing some, some, some horrific uh, scenes. Rather than being caught up, Human Rights Watch in a report of July 16th says, quote, that you have been targeting apparent civilian structures and killing civilians in violation of the laws of war. The report goes on to say, quote, Israel should end unlawful attacks that do not target military objectives and may be intended as collective punishment. Have they also got the situation wrong? The Israeli military 
only targets, legitimate military targets. The decision-making process in identifying them goes through multiple layers of intelligence, goes through a legal consultation and advice with a judicial overview for throughout the process, uh, and includes significant training of the officers on the operational level. Uh, let's, let's understand, I don't know if you've ever been in combat, but, but it's a terrible place to be. It's, a, it's an ugly place to be. Civilians are caught up in the fighting. Uh, as we've seen today, precisely what we warned about, exactly but, but, sir, why we did th not this want is to a, be This is a human this rights watch organization that says it's investigated and it's saying that civilians are not being caught up, they're being targeted. Can you explain then, for example, why on the 10th of July, according to this very report, on the 11th of July, beg your pardon, Israeli missile struck a vehicle in the Burej refugee camp, killing two municipal workers inside. The report goes on to say the explosion blew the roof off the vehicle and partly disemboweled a nine-year-old girl and wounded her sister, eight years old. Can you explain that to me, having said what you just told me, that Israel only targets legitimate military sites that have gone through several levels of intelligence clearance? How did that mm -hmm. attack on July mm -hmm. the 11th yes. happen then? Yes, to, to repeat what I said, uh, I don't know if you've been in combat. It's a, it's a terrible place and it's not a pure science. Uh, there is no example, unfortunately, of civilians not getting, being caught up. And it's precisely the reason why we didn't want to be in this conflict in the first place. Uh, the no, so you're not answering the question. Can you then targets. explain this attack? If you, if you only I, target I, legitimate targets, how was a municipal worker attacked and a nine-year-old girl reason, disemboweled if you only target legitimate military sites? For, for two very simple reasons, one of which is that civilians are caught up in the fire in every conflict, and the other is because Hamas is perpetrating multiple war crimes, including putting deliberately their own civilians in the line of fire uh, to the point of, of, of wanting civilian casualties on their own side so that they can wage a propaganda public relations war against Israel. Help us to understand what you mean by s the civilians are caught up in the line of fire. According to the same report of July 16th, it mentions an Israeli airstrike on July the 10th on the family home of Mohammed al Hajj, a tailor in the densely crowded Khan Yunis refugee camp. Seven civilian members of his family were killed, including two children, and more than 20 civilians in the area were wounded. Now, apparently, the only person who could have been seen as having links to any uh, armed organizations was al Hajj's 20-year-old son, a low-ranking member of Hamas. Is it the Israeli modus operandi that it's OK to target a civilian home, kill seven members of one family, two children, wound 20 people in a neighborhood, if you can get to a low-ranking member of a Palestinian faction? In, in, in the specific example you give, as I think that you well know, we phoned them in advance, we sent text messages in advance, there was a, a, a non-explosive sound bomb dropped on the, uh, in advance. Uh, but, there, but was sir, there were 20 civilians uh, around the area who were warning. wounded. We I mean, are, we what, are, even if we you are phone, required, it, it, with all due respect, even if you phone a member of only, a household, if 20, you cannot warn mm -hmm. every single person in the entire neighborhood, and you can't expect them all to get out immediately and they have somewhere to go. Clearly, according to Human Rights Watch, they're saying when you drop a bomb on a civilian home, you do know that there is a very like, uh, high probability that civilians are going to be killed and wounded. We are taking unprecedented steps uh, uh, to avoid civilian casualties, not only the, the specific buildings which are targeted, but uh, uh, buildings in the, in the surrounding and immediate vicinity are, are warned in, in a way that hasn't been done in any military conflict before. And coupled with that, we are seeing so a So why cynical, are civilian homes uh, still being bombed brutal, then? A, a civilian homes are not being bombed. So Human uh, Rights Watch is wrong in this report targets. then? You, you, if Human Rights Watch have any credible evidence, they should put it on the table for it to be investigated. The, the, the Israeli military has a, a, a long, well-known record of monitoring and criticizing itself 
we, unlike what you see, for example, up in Syria, we've, we've allowed and agreed for the media to come in. Uh, I, I welcome the media coming in and having a look at what's going on there. It's a very complex, difficult, and, and I repeat, uh, uh, tragic uh, uh, environment, and precisely the reason, again, why, why we didn't want to be in this conflict in the first place. But the government of Israel has the obligation to defend and protect the public of Israel Almost 2,000 rockets and missiles have been launched into Israel, over 140 of them from the Shajaiya neighborhood in the last couple of days. Over 10 tunnel shafts, uh, the second leg of the Hamas military strategy, uh, have been identified in Shajaiya. For days now, we almost begged the, neighborhoods, the, the, the residents to move out, to take refuge in other neighborhoods. I'm not, I, I, I don't think that it's an easy situation, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, but we are taking unprecedented steps and we grieve the, the, the tragic loss of life of civilians on both sides of this conflict. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming on.